Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Hey, my name is Marcus. I'm the lead pastor here, and Pastor Joel will be back, I think, this next week. But um, before we get into the message, one, just want to say hello to all those who are online. Let's give them a hand real quick. If you're ever in the area, make sure and come down to the west end of Seguin and come and participate in the worship experience in the morning. Don't be lazy. Get out of bed. Let's go. And so, um, also, a um, couple things. One, all the men, all the men on three say who. Huh. One, two, three. Huh. Dang, that's awesome. Let's do it one more time, real loud. One, two, three. Huh. Dang it. Look at that. That's awesome. Okay. So, November 1 and 2, it's Friday and Saturday, we have a men's encounter here on this campus. Uh, we're not doing it out there because it would charge us like 400 and something dollars. It's 125 bucks Friday night, Saturday all day in the halftime. And then in the afternoon, we got like a, I, I rented a whole skeeting range, a skeet shoot range. We have a skeet shoot tournament going on. Uh, you can bring your own guns, blah, blah, blah. You'll, I'll get all the details. And if you don't like skeet shooting, maybe we can do nine holes of golf or something, okay, to do that. But that'll be November 1 and 2, Friday and Saturday. Really encourage you to do that. Tom Crick who I'll introduce here in a minute, is going to be our main guest speaker, and he's our new uh, discipleship pastor, uh, oversees all of our small groups, and I'll introduce him to you, him and Jane, uh, at the end of the service. You can have an opportunity to, to get to meet them a little bit. You guys ready for the Word of God? I have in my spirit last night a word that just came up, and I just had to run with it. Actually, the word is run. Can you say run? Run. There was just an urgency. There's something that came up about just we've got to. It, it has to do with pace. Has to do with um, with the intensity. Uh, it's time to run. Speaking of running or, or run, uh, I, I heard a joke about um, the lettuce and the tomato that were running against each other. The lettuce was always ahead, and the tomato was always playing catch up. <laughs> Thought that was cute. But in my spirit, there, there was this idea of run. It's time to run. We've seen videos on um, social media where they play games about running and stuff. People are running. They're scaring people with scare tactics, and uh, they're running all over the place. But the Bible has a whole lot to say about running. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, talks about running our race. Uh, We are to run a race with joy, and we are to run our race looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Amen? Amen. So there's uh, 1 Corinthians that also talks about run. It talks about run in such a way, run with the attitude that you're going to win. Don't just run to get in a race. Run with the attitude of winning. Uh, Isaiah, the 40th chapter, said some of us are weary. Some of us have grown tired. Some of us are just, you know, just wasted. We've been burning the, the, the candles. And the scripture says if you're weary, Isaiah, the 40th chapter, talks about those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength they will mount on weagles, weagles, on eagles, like wings like eagles. They will walk and not faint. They will run and not be weary. It's time for some of us to start running. Timothy talks about run from youthful passions. There's appetites. There's things that are trying to constantly pull in our lives, immediate gratification. And it's easy for us to say, yes, we're going to be running away from those things. Lot was asked to run away from Sodom and Gomorrah. Some of us are going to be asked to be running away from stuff. Some of us need to be running towards stuff. I don't know what that is, but the determining factor and the guidance in that is the spirit of God working inside of your life. I read this quote, and here's the spirit behind of of kind of the message of this morning. The quote goes something like this, run when you can, walk if you have to, crawl if you must, just never give up. And that's the idea. You can't give up. Some of us are on on the fringe of giving up, but all we need to do is just stop. Some of us need on the fringe of giving up, but we need to start running. Some of us are on the on the fridge of just, you know, just we're just frustrated and tired, and we don't know what else to do. The, the scripture tells us to, to, we're, we're, to we're to get behind and, and, and run the race that is for us. Not our race, I mean our race, not someone else's race. I don't know about you, but I was a runner growing up. But I was more of a sprinter than I was a long distance runner. Some of you guys like long distance running? What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> I never did. I just liked short distance, just sprinting, 100-yard dash. 220, the hurdles, all that, third leg on the 440 relay. And there was a time when uh, we were playing, we were at this track here in Seguin, 
And, uh, you know, you, you keep scoring stuff. Individual competition, you have scores that you tally up. Also, team competition, you tally as a, as a team. And we needed some points, but we needed to get involved in the last marathon or the relay, the mile, not the relay, the mile, the mile run. And our, our mile guy happened to be sick and couldn't do it. So coach was asking, hey, we need a volunteer. Well, guess who volunteers? Marcus, because I like running. And, uh, but I was not a marathon guy. So I said, man, I'll smoke these guys and I'll be a team player. So the, the gun goes off, there I am running. I'm running. I'm going to smoke these guys. 20, first 220, I was way ahead of the pack. It's like, man, see y'all. We'll see y'all later. Come, you know, the second time around going around, I started losing traction. And next thing you know, these guys were catching up. Third time around, most of them have already passed me. And I'm like, <sighs> and guys are sitting there beside me. Come on, Avalos, we got to finish. Like, shut up. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Fourth time around, I'm in dead last. Seriously, I'm in dead last. The crowd's everywhere. It's the last race of the whole tournament. We've got to finish. And the guy that's second to the last is one of my nemesis that used to be in Breeze And I was like, I, I don't mind losing, but I'm not going to lose that guy right there. So I'm sitting there. I'm trying to muster everything I can. I'm cramping up. I'm going around the last lap. And guys are coming off the stands. Go, Avalos. Go, Avalos. Don't embarrass us. Everybody's finished the race. It's just him and I over the last, you know, the last half of the race. And I pull everything that I can inside. And I won. And it's almost like we were winning for first place. Everybody's cheering and everything. We were winning for dead last. We were playing for dead last. I love running. But someone in here needs to run. You need to start running or stop running. Some of us need to run to something that we've been running away from. You know what you're supposed to be running towards. But you're running the opposite direction. Some of us need to stop running or from something. We need, we need to stop running from the thing that he's asking us to run towards. Some of us are running on fumes. And we're running on empty. And we need to stop running, period, or just pause so we can get restored and get refreshed and get renewed. Some of us are running wild. Some of us know people that are running wild. And you know, the answer to, 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 to cure people that are running wild, you got to give them a vision. The scripture says, those without a vision run wild. You want to know why your husband's going crazy? He needs a vision. You want to know why your wife is going crazy? She needs a vision. Your family's going wild. They need a vision to give purpose and direction, eternal things, to get them steady. Some of us have been walking, and it's more a matter of it's a season where it's no longer wrestling. You got to start running now. We've been walking at a certain pace. It's time. It's like an alertness coming up. It's time to start running. Some of us are lazy or making excuses. It's time to stop those things and just get up, put your shoes on. Let's get after it. Let's keep on moving forward. Some of us, you've been dating him or her three different times already. You know what they look like. Now it's, start, it's, it's time to start running. Run away from those guys. Don't give, you know, don't give in. Don't buy in. Like, oh, I can change them. I'll make them a Christian. They're beautiful people, but man, they're horrible attitudes. No, don't buy your, don't lie to yourself. Run away. You know, when, when Potiphar's wife, you know, just was, got totally naked and pursued Joseph, the scripture says that Joseph, he didn't say there, oh, man, she's, uh, yeah, I am good looking, ain't I? No, she he took off running. He left running. As a matter of fact, they pulled his clothes off. He left naked. That's how intense he was adamant about not giving in to the, the, the appetites of his flesh in that moment. And he, he ran away from those things. Some of us have been an intern and a, an apprentice long enough. It's time to start your own and run your own business. I don't know where you're at. Some of us need to just run with the vision that he spoke to you about. He spoke to you about something, but you're wondering what the next step is. You'll never know the next step until you take the first step. Run with the vision that God's given you. And some of us have been running very, very well. We've been doing well, but all of a sudden, in this season, you find yourself hindered. Who hindered you from the truth, Galatians says? You've been running well. You got hurt. You got something happened. You got broken. You were sidelined. sidelined. You're wounded. Yeah, there's a time um, to, to lick your wounds. There's a time to get restored. You know, this is a hospital, and everyone in here who's sick or afflicted or broken is welcome here. But we don't, we don't welcome you and we don't keep you here just for the purpose of bandaging your wounds. 
We do it so that you can get back out there and fulfill the purpose that God has for your life. Get you healthy, get you strong, get you at the right place, and then get out there and let's go for it. Let's make it hard for people to go to hell in our community. Amen? And you need to partner with individuals. And so spiritually, though, here's what I do know. Every single one of us were made to run. Proverbs 18 says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it. We run towards this strong tower. Some of us are running away from the very thing that God's asking us to run to. Go to Seguin. Go to this crossroads church. I don't want to. I want to run away from my church back home. Well, you have no idea what's going to happen when you submit yourself under the church that you're supposed to be under. Sometimes every exit, remember, is an entrance into something else. So it's hard to make exit moments, but know and believe and trust God that he has the best plan for your life, that this exit is just an entry into another space that's going to be a blessing for me and my family. Amen. Some of us are in that place. We need to run. All of us were made to run. Strong tower is, a, is the name of the Lord is a strong tower and a strong tower in scripture. It describes God as the source of protection, a source of refuge or a source of fa- safety. When you look at the, uh, the, the, the strong tower physical building, when you look at the attributes of it, a lot of it's just connected to some of the same attributes that God, our Heavenly Father, is towards us. The attributes of some of the things in a strong tower, the, the strong towers were used to protect people from danger. Well, our Heavenly Father does that for us. He is our strong tower. Uh, sometimes they would use a strong tower. It became a refuge and a shelter during storms. Well, who is? He is the refuge in, in times of storms. Amen. If we trust him, put our tr- we run towards him. The, the, the buildings were strong and tall and immovable, just like our heavenly father is. He's immovable. He's unshakable. He's the alpha. He's the omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. If we keep our eyes on him, he will help us and he will navigate us out into a place of victory and a place of triumph. It says he always causes us to triumph in Christ. Always. And so we have to run towards him, run to his plan, run to his purpose, and you'll see victory in Jesus' name. That tower was always elevated above the battleground. Why? Because you get a better perspective during battle. And that's exactly what God wants to do in our lives. He will, in the middle of your battle, he will raise you up, he will lift you up so that you can see the, the battle from his perspective rather than yours. When my girls were small, they used to go, we used to go to the candy store. They love candy and Popo loves candy too. I love candy. Sweet tarts. And I, they, would, they would pick whatever they want to, but they only had a certain amount of perspective. They only saw the stuff that would melt in your hands. They would saw the hard candy stuff that cracked their teeth. They, that's all they saw. When I, every time I would say, hey, look at these. You want some of these? He goes, no, dad, we want these. It's like, well, you haven't seen what's up here. So I would have to elevate them and bring them up to a higher place so they can see the other things that were available to them. And all of a sudden, their eyes would open up. And so it is with your heavenly father and my heavenly father. He wants to elevate us. Hey, you're, you're, you're getting off the crumbs here. There's a whole lot more space up here. There's a better perspective up here that will give you victory and triumph. Places and things you've never tasted before that are just so good for you. Amen? That's who our heavenly father is. We just lean upon him. When I was a kid, I used to be a part of a gang, elementary school, uh, it's it called the Weinert Street Gang, okay, because we lived on Weinert Street. And uh, we used to have a bunch of friends that were, it was just crazy, crazy fun, fun times. We would have to, initiation was get on top of the, ho- the tallest house, find the tip of the house, and jump off. And we had to land on our feet because that was the, the thing to do in our club. You know, you were a man, you were a Weinert cat, or whatever you call it, whatever we were called. And so I, I would, there was always a bald spot in front of the air conditioner at dad's house. Well, the reason why is I would water it down because we had the highest house. I would water it down so that whenever I would jump, I would jump into mud. I would jump into a landing, soft landing. I'd be like, yeah, I'm, it. I'm the captain. This is my dad's house. And so when we were kids, we also wanted to create a, like a hub. So we found this massive willow tree at the end of the road, and inside of it was just all like empty, like just like a, a hollow. And so we created like a bat cave around the edge of it. So we'd go through, off the street, around the grass. We created this little hole. We would just go straight through there, and then that'd become a safe place for us. 
There's a refuge for us, a shelter for us. We knock on doors, take off, and we would go in there, and the police would go by, and be like, they can't see us. If we run away from parents, they can't see us. We could see everybody. If we'd go and hit the other gang guys and throw rocks at their bikes, we'd take off, we would hide. We, they couldn't see us. It's a, it's a place of refuge. And it was, and actually, I'm still doing that right now as, an, as a 60-year-old. I have a place of refuge at my house. I created a little pathway in the back, and I just put a little seat out there, put some candles out there, I put some, um, some fencing, fencing out there, put mom's picture out there. It's just a place for me to get away, pray, relax, worship, meditate, throw some music on. It's a safe place for me, and I run to it. As a matter of fact, it's, it's tempting. Every time I look towards it, I'm like, I got to get over there, spend some time. And from that place, I can see Natalie. If she comes out looking for me, I'm like, <laughs> this is my space. This is my time right now. Now she knows. If it's safe, people will run to it. If it feels safe, people run to it. If your home feels safe, you want to know why your kids aren't coming home and why there's a distance there? Don't feel safe. If there's anything I can tell parents is this, is that more than anything else about attitudes and all that stuff, make sure that you recognize the distance that your heart is from their heart or the proximity, how close it is. And you keep that close because it's in that place that you can coach and love, and correct, and admonish, and lift up, and do those things. It's when people don't feel safe that they don't want to go home. It's when we don't feel safe, they feel like they're going to be damned, or condemned, or harassed all the time, that that, they don't run to those places. But the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous, they they run to it, and are safe. Running towards uh, the, the, the the strong tower of God is a safe thing to do. What is the name of the Lord? What name brings you that safety and that security and that presence and that thing that you need to, to, to move forward? Well, how, what names has God revealed himself to you? We've talked about his names earlier this year a lot. What name has he revealed to you that it gives you that place of safety? You know, is he your savior or is he, is he just suspicious to you? I used to think he was just suspicious. He was the one that caused the accidents. He just wanted to get my attention somehow. Who is the name of the Lord to you? Is he, is, is, is he the Lord who heals or is he the Lord who hurts? Because you can't receive healing from the one who heals if all you think is that he's just offering hurt. It's impossible to walk by faith. Is, is he the prince of peace or is he the prince of chaos and pandemonium? Is he the one that causes all these things or is he the one that wants to lead you in the middle of all this stuff and yet have a sense of peace that passes all understanding? Is he a provider or is he a taker? You'll never see the open handedness and generosity of God if all you're doing is closing your fist. When you close your fist, you never have the opportunity to receive all that he has for you. That's why he doesn't need your money. What he's trying to get away uh, from our lives is greed and covetousness. Knowing that these things are None of them are ours. They're all his. We're just a steward of them. Who, who is he? Is he is, do you see him as your anchor? Or is he, is he the reason why your ship is sinking? Is he your defender? Is he the one that's accusing you? Is he the lion of the tribe of Judah? Or is he just a little pussycat? And speaking of the lion, there's, there's a couple of passages of scripture in, in the whole Bible that talk about uh, the lion of the tribe of Judah and the roar of the lion. Some of us are running away from the roar that we need to be running towards. You know, they say that uh, a lion roars. When he roars, all he's doing is causing havoc and fear in the prey of, his, of, of the, what he's trying to capture. And when they get alert because they hear the roar, they begin to run away. They run um, away from the roar. But little do they know that the lioness, his wife, is on that side. So when they run away, they run right into the trap and the, and the strategy of the lion and the lioness. Isn't that beautiful? And so there is a voice of the lion of the tribe of Judah that we need to understand and hear. But there's also another counterfeit voice of a lion. It says that the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You know, watch him. 
And, and, and the voice of, of, of the line of the tribe of Judah, that's just strong, but it gives you hope and it gives you a future and it gives you a dream. It, gives you, it just gives you confidence to move forward. But the voice of the enemy and the counterfeit, it drives you into fear. It cowers you down. It makes you suspicious and questioning. It always navigates towards the, 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 the things of this flesh. But we have the line of the tribe of Judah who's with us. And he will just roar and we run towards him and he will give us a safe place, a safe place to run to. Proverbs 28 says, the wicked flee when no one is even pursuing, but the righteous, they're bold as a lion. Uh, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time, but there's things that we need to run away from. And you can just write these down. There's things that we need to run away from. This is obvious. We need to run away from sexual immorality, from fornication, from youthful lust. Fought the righteousness, faith, and charity. The scripture says to submit yourself, therefore, run to God. Position yourself with him, and then he'll empower you to resist the devil. Many of us wake up in the morning trying to figure out, what are we going to resist today? I got to resist this. I got to stop doing this. I got to stop. That's living life playing defense. You got to live your life playing offense. If you submit to God, you already position yourself to resist the devil. Whenever you submit yourself to God and love him all with all your heart and let that be the first portion of your day, all of a sudden the same temptations are going to come. And rather than, oh, I got to resist that. I got to resist that. It's like, no, I'm already empowered. I resist that in Jesus name. He empowers you. That's why when the apostle Paul writes scripture, a lot of the uh, uh, epistles, he always writes the first three chapters or so about what God has done. And then the last two chapters, he always writes, now do this, now walk this way. Why? Because he wants us to understand what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. That is the empowerment. That is what enables us to live this walk, this walk out day by day. You can't do it in your own flesh. You can't do it in your own strength. We can do it for a season, but it won't give us a long shelf life as a follower of Jesus. That's why you see a whole lot of them uh, do well in the beginning, and then they're a bunch of old, you know, uh, just worn out Christians, mean Christians. You ever had any mean Christians in your life before? Stop doing that. You're not supposed to do that. Doesn't the Bible say that? Like, golly, the Bible also says, and Judas hung himself. You go do likewise. No, I don't know. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I didn't say that. I've never said that. It just came up right now. What do we need to run towards? Thank you for asking. Here's some things that we need to run towards. Run towards your heavenly goal. Let Let me ask you a question. What's the last thing that you know for sure that God told you to do? What's the last thing he told you to do that you know for sure? Why are you pausing? Why'd you stop? Run to it. Run towards that. Run towards the heavenly goal. It says, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call. That's the upward call of God. He put that vision inside of you because only you can fulfill what he wants to fulfill here on this earth. And we have no idea what a simple yes will do to impact the lives of generations and generations to come. A simple yes, I did not want to be here in Seguin, did not want to pastor a church. I'm not a pastor. I'm a middle guy. Well, he said, I want you to go home and tell them how much I love them. Pastor this church. Yes, sir. What little yes, what has it done? Little did I know that it would impact people like, like the way it's doing it. Little did I know. But a simple yes, you have no idea what will take place in your family, in your legacy, in your future, with your kids, with your grandkids. Isn't that the truth? It says, run after that heavenly calling. Why? A lot of people are at stake. Your family primarily, your wife, your children, yourself. Run for God's kingdom. It says, seek after the kingdom first and his righteousness and all these other things will will be added to you. Galatians, the fifth chapter, or well, 1 Corinthians 9 I already said this, run to win, run with an attitude. If you're going to run, like, yeah, I'm a Christian, yeah, I'm running a race, but you're not running with the right attitude. Run to win, run as if though you're going to conquer something without the attitude. But just like, you just have this confidence, like, man, this is what the Bible says. This is who my God is. This is what I'm standing on. Mm. Make sense? Yeah. Because a lot of times we're just like little pussycats, little Crisis here, a little circumstance here, a little storm here. We, 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 we're like weenies. We just cower down. 
It's like, you know, the, the guy that hits the golf shot and he shanks it and he gets it and he, he breaks his golf club. Well, that's stupid. That's not going to do anything. Get your tail back up there, get your golf club and hit it again and do it better this time. Well, it's the same thing with us. So we blew it. We were, were pursuing God's will. Something happened. Didn't go according to the plan that we thought it was going to go. Well, get back up, buttercup, suck it up and let's move forward. Let's keep running. How many times have I had an opportunity to quit? Tons, hundreds of times, hundreds of times. I'm not going to allow all the circumstances in this life keep me from fulfilling what God has asked me to do. I just can't do it. Run to freedom. Galatians, the fifth chapter says, it says, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, run towards that. Run away from the things that bring you into bondage. Run, to, run away from the things that try to master you whether it's addictions, alcohol, people, whatever it is. The whole idea is God wanting us to live free. And then Hebrews 12 says, run your own race. Not only run to your own race, run at your own pace. Don't compete. Don't compare. It's like, man, they're going faster. Well, you're not that fast. You're slow. Stay in that pace. Stay in your rhythm. Everything is a rhythm. The sun and the moon have a rhythm. The seasons of life have a rhythm. We're fixing to go into a rhythm of the fall. Everything. Women have a rhythm every month. I know. I raise three daughters. Men have a rhythm. You have patterns. I have patterns. There's a rhythm to your race as well. Learn how to pace. And don't let anybody do that for you. You do it yourself. Jesus said it this way. If you're tired, you're weary, you're frustrated in life, run to me. You're tired of running over there. You're tired of running over there for answers. You're tired of running over there. Run to me. Come to me. Those who are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest for your soul. That's who God wants to do in our lives. Rest. Gives us rest. The time to run is now. Ahorita. (laughs) It's a time to let's make this happen right. Why? You know why? Because in Luke's gospel, the 15th chapter, our heavenly father your heavenly father is running towards you. He's aggressively running towards you. There's a a gospel, there's a story there of two brothers who had everything with their dad. And one of the the ones wanted to go spend on, spend his, get his inheritance and spend it on frivolous living. And so he did. Was selfish, started doing stuff that he shouldn't have been doing. That's not how he was raised, but he found himself in the middle of a, of a mess in a, pig's, in a pig's pen, eating pig's food when he comes to his senses. And he says, man, I had everything at my dad's house. What am I doing out here? So he makes his way back. He says, man, I'm going to go back home. And while he's going back home, he sees his house in a distance, it's there on the hill, but he sees something moving. He sees a shadow or something moving in the distance. And it's moving closer and it's moving not, not, not towards the house, but coming towards him. And the scripture says this. And who was that? The scripture says that his father got up, or this guy got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him because he ran to his son. What he saw was the shadow of his dad running towards him. You might feel like you are way distant in your relationship or in your race with God. You might feel like, man, I can't do this. I've I've messed up too much or I'm stuck in this thing in my life right now. But I want you to know if you just get the eyes of faith, see your heavenly father running towards you right now to embrace you, to restore you, to heal you, to lift you up, to get you back on the race, get you back in a rhythm where you can fulfill your purpose. Amen. Amen. Father, you're so good to us. We're thankful for the word. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Help us to run. Help us to eliminate the things that we need to eliminate and run with passion, with passion, Lord God, the race that is set before us. We trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.